Hello from Bling Your Band. I would like to talk to you about extremely large decals. Today, I received these photos from a customer. Her application resulted in some wrinkles, and she asked my advice on what to do. I said that I would create a video showing how to apply her set of decals, and I think that it may help everyone, so I'm going to upload this to YouTube. I'm going to show the work close up so you can see my technique. I'm going to start with the name, and I'm going to cut around the name as close as I can so that I don't get any more excess transfer tape than I have to. I'm careful to peel the backing away from the decals instead of the decals away from the backing, or I could put crinkles in the decals. I will apply the name as a block. I'm going to tack the name down in the very center, but just at the center. I'm going to work from the center out. Usually with names, you can take your finger and you can trace each letter. Any crinkling will build up in the transfer tape only section where you don't really mind. So just take your finger and trace on the vinyl of the letters. Here, the transfer tape was kind of getting in the way at the bottom of the L. So I took my fingers and then the scissors just to cut a little notch in the transfer tape section so I could get that bottom of the L to go down where I wanted. I work from the middle to the edges. Go back to the middle a little bit, work back toward the edge, just a little at a time. If you look at the top of the B, you can see that a little bit of excess vinyl is building up. If I just press that down with my finger, it's probably going to leave a crease. My fingers just can't apply enough pressure and enough pressure where it is needed. And so I need to use a squeegee and press down right where the bubble is forming. I'm trying to take this vinyl that wants to lay flat and I'm trying to get it to mold to a curved surface. So I do have to apply pressure in places to make this vinyl go flat. I just press down carefully, pushing the vinyl down flat and removing any tendency for there to be a wrinkle. The lower portion of the B also needs some pressure to get it to go flat. Again, I couldn't do this with just my finger. I always slowly peel back the transfer tape just to make sure that something doesn't want to come up with the transfer tape and then uh, distort or tear. When I go slow, if I see any issue, I can just push that vinyl back down on the helmet. Sometimes when you remove the transfer tape, you'll see just the hint of a small wrinkle. You can go back with the squeegee and work that out in most cases. Let's see how it looks. That's perfect. There are no wrinkles or creases anywhere in the name. Now, most people are probably not going to apply the vintage roses design on a blue helmet, but a blue helmet is what I had handy, and I wanted to get this video out to this lady today. I'm going to take the largest design on this Vintage Roses, which is probably one of the largest single pieces of vinyl that we have in any design, and I'm going to apply it to the helmet. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to carefully cut around the entire design, trying to not leave any more excess transfer tape than I have to.
With this orientation, I can get this entire design on the helmet without the design overlapping the helmet. But it's okay on a large design usually, particularly with flowers, if a portion overlaps, you can just take a sharp knife later and trim that piece off. Again, I'm careful to remove the backing from the decal rather than the decal from the backing. I'm also going to tack this design down in the very, very center. In the very center, I can just use my finger and kind of get the design started, tacking it down. On a design like this, I just don't have any chance of getting it down flat without something like a squeegee. Um, here you see me lift up the edge of the vinyl. The edge of the vinyl kind of stuck down accidentally and that would cause me a problem later if I didn't catch it and get it back up. I just want this stuck down in the middle right now and I'm going to work my way slowly to the edges. I'm going to start at the center with the squeegee and slowly work my way to the edge. This is a large piece of vinyl going on a curved band. Imagine trying to uh, get a square piece of paper to sit down flat on this band. The paper really wants to retain its flat shape. It, it doesn't want to bend to the band. So we're going to have to take pressure and we're going to have to force this vinyl to mold to the shape of the helmet. So I'm going to take the squeegee and I'm just going to keep it moving. You can see that I'm moving it a lot back and forth, but I'm kind of staying in the same general area. I'm going to start at the center and I'm going to work an area towards the center and kind of get that down flat. Then I'm going to rotate the band and I'm going to start in a new place but close to the center. And I'm just going to keep rotating the band and just kind of working out and from the center just a little bit at a time. If I try to rush this and I just try to go right to the edge, I'm going to get wrinkles for sure. I really want to start from the center and just keep that squeegee moving a lot and rotating from the center. I'm applying a fair amount of pressure here. Um, I can feel it in my wrists. So you don't have to apply the force of God, but you do want to be applying some force as you're moving the squeegee. And I just keep going back and forth, back and forth, just pushing forward into a new area um, every couple of strokes. Um, as I feel like I've made a little progress in one direction, I rotate the band and I then push kind of in another direction. And I just keep pushing, pushing, pushing and applying pressure. As I move towards the edges, you'll see that the vinyl is now kind of building up a, a hill and valley profile, um, a little bit of wrinkling. Uh, of course, as you move to the very edges, that's where you tend to get the creasing wanting to happen. Um, when I see an area that's wanting to crease, if there's other areas of the band that need to be stuck down, uh, maybe I'll just go work on that area and then come back later. Um, but at some point, I'm going to have to deal with the creases uh, in these areas. And so we'll see how I do that in a few minutes. I'm not going to speed this video up. Um, I want people to see what the process really looks like in close detail. Can you see how the transfer tape is really starting to kind of crinkle um, at the edge as I've worked close to it? So you should see that. Um, it shouldn't freak you out. We can deal with that. This is going to be normal to see. Now I'm ready to work on these crinkly edges uh, of the decal. Um, you see how I've got my squeegee there? I'm going to sweep out towards the edge and I'm going to put a lot of pressure. I'm going to force that vinyl to go flat um, as I push it down. I'm going to use short, powerful strokes in this area. It didn't happen to me today, but sometimes you can get a crease build up in the vinyl and it builds up before you see what's happening and then there it is and it's too late. Um, to completely not have it. Uh, the way to deal with that is take a sharp point on your squeegee and apply a lot of pressure at the starting point of the crease. 
try to push that crease out and flat. Sometimes you can push the crease completely out to where you can't see it. Even if you can't completely get rid of the crease, if you put a lot of pressure along the crease line, you can take that crease to where you won't really be able to see it in the finished vinyl. I've got this vinyl on this edge portion down flat, but I'm still working it with the squeegee. When I bend the vinyl to the curvature of the helmet, that puts a lot of stress in the vinyl. And as I work the vinyl, it kind of releases that tension and makes it to where it doesn't want to pucker back up, but it just wants to stay flat. I'm kind of getting towards the home stretch now. Um, I just have a few edges to go, and I just keep doing the same thing, applying a lot of pressure, and I keep that squeegee moving back and forth, back and forth. So to recap, I started in the middle, the very middle. I only tacked down the middle of the design. And then I took the squeegee and I, I stroked a lot, just back and forth, back and forth. But I didn't make big movements across the decal. Um, I just moved around the decal slowly, starting in the center and working my way towards the edges. I never stuck down all the way to one edge with the other side of the decal um, not really stuck down at all. I kind of want every part of the decal stuck down at the same rate. If I see that there's a little bit of a crease or something that's not stuck down, I want to address it before I remove the transfer tape. But if I do see something after I remove the transfer tape, I can just stick some transfer tape down over the trouble area and I can press full force again. I didn't have to do that here, but I've had to do that in the past. All right, let's see the finished design. Again, I peel back slowly. The transfer tape is sticky, and if there's some portion of the design that would rather stick to the transfer tape than to the helmet, um, I might tear something or stretch something before I realize it. So there we go, a perfectly flat set of vintage roses.